Hey, Landon. Sorry, buddy. What are you doing? I am bodybuilding. You're bodybuilding? And, oh, what do you think that, you, what, what are you trying to do when you bodybuild? Um, get stronger. Get stronger and get our bodies working together. Oh, oh, let's do one together. Ready, go. Yeah. Let me hear you. Yeah. Okay, I'm tired. Going on the yeah. table. <laughs> You're probably better with that than me. Well, good good afternoon, good morning, good evening, whenever it is that you are watching our wonderful video. Welcome to Ritter Children's Sunday School class for Sunday, Father's Day, June 21st. We're so excited to have you join us today. And we have a great lesson on bodybuilding. Now, it might not include these kind of weights, but we're gonna talk about how important it is to build our bodies strong, but more importantly, how to build the body of Jesus Christ, His church. How we can each work hard and do our part to build His body. And we are excited about doing that. Now, before we get too much into our lesson, we would like to visit our wonderful, amazing barnyard friends from Trackers of Faith. They've got an important lesson that, for us today too, and they're gonna talk a little bit more about the map. You may remember that map from the last couple of Sundays, and then we'll follow up with a little bit more of that once we watch. So let's enjoy. And we're gonna see Penny, Walker, Luke, Duke, and who else? Who's that fun? Milton. Milton, the fun pig. All right, enjoy. Trackers of Faith, featuring Duke and Luke, the Barn Brothers, Penny, the cold crack and tech savvy gal who is quick on her feet, Walker, the big-hearted handyman who uses his mechanical know-how to lend a helping hand. Jenny, the fun-loving biblical brains of the operation. And Milton, this super sassy swine has been fitted with the latest in animal communication technology. Join this crew of high-tech heroes as they sow truth, know truth, and grow truth. Tractors of Hey boys, how's it going? Hey Penny, Luke and I have just been spending some time with the map. We're trying to figure out what this mark is here. We think it could be Corinth. Wait, Corinth? As in Paul's letter to the Corinthians? Maybe. It all started when Duke and I were talking about the different ways we could structure the farm next year. We were talking about all the special gifts that each of us bring. Yeah, Luke understands the details of farm work. Walker is great with the machinery. Jenny is so smart. You understand all things technology, and I'm good at putting it all together. We're all different, and without any one of us, the farm wouldn't run at its best. That's exactly right. Uh, um, I didn't hear my name mentioned. I would have expected to hear something like, and Milton is so handsome. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know about the handsome, but you're kind of ham-some. <laughs> Get it? Ham-some. <laughs> Yeah, so anyways, there's some scripture that talks about this very thing. It's in... Let me guess. Corinthians. Yep. I'll read it. The human body has many parts, but the many parts make up the whole body. So it's with the body of Christ. Some of us are Jews, some are Gentiles, some are slaves, and some are free. But we have all been baptized in the body by one spirit, and we all share the same spirit. And then, a little later it says, But our bodies have many parts, and God has put each part just where he wants it. How strange a body would be if it had only one part. Yes, there are many parts, but only one body. Oh, I love that. I love that it talks about how everyone in the family of God is unique and does a different important job. If we were all the same, much fewer people would get to be part of the kingdom of God. A body that only had arms and no eyes wouldn't work very well after all. You know, I could have done without picturing a body made up of all arms and no eyes. Sorry, yeah, that was weird. But the point is that the kingdom of God is made up of all kinds of different people with all kinds of different experiences and different gifts. That's on purpose. Well, that's just great. But what does it have to do with the map again? Right. So we were talking about how we all work together to make the farm the very best that it can be. And then we remembered those verses in Corinthians. But we wanted to understand exactly why Paul wrote them and who he wrote them to. So we did some research. 
The church in Corinth had a lot of problems, most of which were because of sin like disunity, jealousy, and pride. Paul wrote this letter to try to remind them that in the body of Christ, we need to come together in love with all of our unique gifts, talents, and purposes so that Jesus may be known in all the world. So, obviously, we looked up where Corinth was, and it's right where this mark is on the map. Interesting. So this is Jerusalem. This is Gaza. I went ahead and noted Rome because that Romans roundabout stuff seemed pretty important. Paul took a lot of time to write to the Romans about how God's plan for salvation extends to all people. And now you're telling me that this is Corinth. I wish the flashlight hadn't messed with my picture. I don't know what else we're looking at. Well, maybe we need to become cartographers. You mean we're going to the grocery store? I'll get my shoes. Buddy, you don't wear shoes, and that's not the kind of card I'm talking about. A cartographer is a person who creates maps. We just need to start going back in time and seeing if we can't figure out what the rest of the stops on this map might be. I love it. Let's get started right away. Look what I can do with these 10 pound weights. Oh, let me see you. What are you gonna do there? Oh my goodness, you are building those muscles and getting stronger all the time. Wow, look at you go. Great, you wanna put them up here? Or do you wanna do some more? Oh, bodybuilding, those were heavy. 10 pounds, very, very good. Oh, ow, did that hurt? I'm sorry, buddy. Yeah, you have to be careful with some of this equipment so we don't get hurt. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Well, we are so excited. How did you like our visit with the barnyard friends. We always love to get to see those guys. They're so fun. All right, today, as you heard them talk about, we are gonna talk about the different ways that we are made. Now, this is Father's Day, and God is our perfect heavenly Father, and He has created us each differently. Even identical twins aren't really identical. There might be something a little bit different about them. So what we're gonna talk about is some of the ways that God has made us wonderfully and uniquely. As a matter of fact, I would like to read you this wonderful scripture from Psalm 139, verses 13 and 14. This is from the book of Psalms, right in the middle of the Old Testament. And this is the truth from God's word, and it says this. For you, our Heavenly Father, for you created me in my inmost being. You knit me together, even in my mother's womb. I praise you, Lord, because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. From Psalm 139, verses 13 and 14. Now, if we know that God has made us, and that he has made us wonderfully, he, we can say, oh, you have made us perfectly, Lord because he's our perfect heavenly father and he has given us all different ways to be strong, different things we're good at. So before we get any farther, I want you to think about the answer to this question. What are things that you are good at? What are some things that you are really good at? Landon, what are some things that you are really good at? Um, I'm pretty smart. Oh. I'm good at you are very good at being smart. God has given you a, an amazing brain. Wonderful. What else are you good at? Um, good at bodybuilding, at lifting weights. You're strong. Basically so you're, these ones. That's right. So you're I not think a, I can even lift up to Well, you might be able to. Yeah, well, you'll have to do that a little bit later on because I don't think I can bring them out. <laughs> so not only are you smart, but you're strong. Uh, do you like to take care of other people? Of course, you have a very caring heart. You think about others and that's so important and I'm really proud of you for that. God gave you what color eyes? Blue. Blue, baby blue eyes, they're so beautiful. God gave you what color? What do you, yeah, like this guy, that's right. What color, what color hair did God give you? Um, yellow. Yeah, and you know, we call yellow hair a lot of times, we call it blonde hair. Now, I want you to take a look at here. Let me, tell me what you see. What color are my eyes? Blue. They're blue. Sometimes they look green, depending on what I'm wearing. <coughs> Excuse me. But today I'm wearing blue, so they look blue. What color is my hair? Red. It's red. And, <clears throat> and a little gray and a little white anymore. But it is red hair. And do what do you what do you have right across your nose that are so cute? Freckles. Freckles. And I have freckles too, but they're, they're on my nose and my arms and everywhere. Yes, go ahead. I also took care of one of my friends by... by So 
so you stood up for your friend, right? For my friend Bentley. Yes. I know. Well, he's a really good friend. That's another way that God has made him. He stands up for his friends and he notices when somebody needs help. And he was very, very good at helping his friends. So God has made us each wonderfully and Me uniquely. Done. Right. I want, to, I want to read one more scripture verse for you about how we are made. This is from the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. This is from the New Living Translation. And it tells us more about how cool God has made each one of us and how unique we are. This says, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things that he planned for us long ago. In other words, God created us beautifully. A masterpiece is from an artist that is the very best, best work that artists could create. Each of us, you, 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 me, we are all God's masterpiece. He's got so many masterpieces. He's got each one of us. And when we say yes to him and we say, Jesus, live in my heart, he is going to help us to use all of those unique ways that we have been created to serve him, to love him, and to help build up the body of Jesus, his church. Yes, Landon. And also, uh-huh. Oh, well, yes. We, you guys probably recognize Milton on this one. And then we Penny. have, there we have Penny here. It's the so cool. Brothers. The Barn Brothers. Yes. So we'll talk about those in just a minute. Now, Landon gave us a lot of ways that God has made him uniquely. I hope that you were thinking about some ways that you have been made uniquely too. Now, the Bible tells us in the book of Corinthians, and remember, you, you've heard this from our friends on the farm, that the city of Corinth, Paul, the Apostle Paul, who used to be Saul until he started loving Jesus, Paul went to the city of Corinth and he visited them and he started churches there. And then he wanted to make sure the churches were doing okay, so he would write letters back to the churches. Well, the, the church in Corinth, we call those folks the Corinthians. If we lived in Indianapolis and Paul wrote a letter to us, he might say the Indianapolisians. Or he might say the Indianians, <laughs> but either way, Paul wrote letters. And the church at Corinth, as you heard in our in our video from our barnyard friends, they were having a little trouble working together. They didn't know how to cooperate. Some of them were complaining. Some of them were jealous of each other, saying, "Well, I want to do what they're doing." And Paul said, "Oh, oh, 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 oh! God made each one of you specially." And he equipped you. He gave you these wonderful gifts that we can use. You don't have to have everything. Just think of it like this. Think of it like a human body. Now, Landon, I, I want to ask you a question. I want to ask you a question. If my body didn't have any arms and it only had eyes, how would that be? It would not be very awesome. That's right. My eyes, I need my, my arms and my legs and my eyes to be able to work strongly and to work the way God wants us to. It's the same way in the body of Christ. Let's see, Landon, let's say that you didn't have any ears and that your whole body was made of hands. First of all, it would look pretty funny, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. But if you didn't I mean, have any... Were my ears like hands? Hands, <laughs> hands everywhere. No ears, no eyes, no mouth. So wouldn't that be kind of strange? Yeah, yeah, it would be kind of strange. Well, God gave each one of us a job to do, just like he created our bodies with different, different ways that they have jobs. Our eyes help us see. Our ears help us to hear. Our mouth, we can sing, we can talk, we can speak, we can eat. Our arms help us to, to, to do things. Our legs take us where God wants us to go. And everything in between, the tip of our head to the bottom of our feet, is created by God. And when one part's not working well, I had my arm in a cast for a long time and it didn't work very well. My wrist got broken and my other parts of my body had to help make up for that. So when we are in Jesus' church, the body of Christ, we call it the body of Christ because we are Christians. And when we are learning how to use our gifts, if there's somebody who says, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be an arm. I want to be an eye. It's got to be more important. Or I don't want to, to just serve in the nursery. I want to do something else. Well, that means they're not doing their job. 
and it's not working as well as it should. So it's so important for us to know that we are each created uniquely and God has given us special talents and special gifts and these gifts are from him now it's just like our body if we're not doing our job it's not going to work together very well so there's lots and lots of different ways that we can serve the Lord and some of these are listed in the book of Corinthians and also in the book of Romans and the book of Ephesians so I would like for you to read this with me this is the book of first Corinthians remember the church at Corinth the Corinthians were not getting along very well they had people who were not uh, team players. They just didn't want, they always wanted to have their way or they, they wanted to do something that somebody else was doing. The point is God has given us each wonderful ways to serve. So this is from 1 Corinthians 12, verses four and five. And it says, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, gifts from our Lord, but it's the same spirit, one Holy Spirit. And he is the source of them all. There are different kinds of service ways we can serve God, but we serve the same Lord and God works in different ways but it is the same God who does the work in all of us in other words we're not all gonna have the same job to do we may not even be all very good at the same job but that's that's how God planned it so we can all work together to make sure that his work gets done and that people can hear about him well let's hear about some of these gifts you may not understand them all right now and that is okay this is from the book of Romans Romans chapter 12 there are gifts of prophesying, serving, teaching, encouraging, giving, showing mercy, and doing it cheerfully. And there are a few other places where things are listed too. In the book of 1 Corinthians, we're going to go on. Here's a few more. Apostles, prophets, teachers. Some of these you have already heard. Doing miracles, healing, helping, guidance speaking in different languages like tongues and here's a little bit more wisdom knowledge faith and these are all given by God they're not given by anybody else they're all given by God so that we can do his work and build up his church now Landon what I want us to do now and if you guys have a piece of paper you can just use a scrap piece of paper and some kind of marker what I want us to do now is I'm gonna draw the outline of a body right here okay I'm gonna draw the outline of a body now Miss Beth is not in town right now so you'll have to bear with me because I'm not a very good artist she she has the gift of art of artistry and creativity and she's very good at all of this but I'm gonna do my best because she's not here and Landon can help me so I'm just gonna draw an outline of a body there's the head there's the arm oh that's terrible here's a foot <laughs> Here's another arm. It kind of looks like a gingerbread man. That's okay. And there we go. Okay. All right. It looks okay. Just use your imagination. Like I said, I am not the artist, but this is a body. Okay. I'm going to have to do this because that doesn't even look like an arm. That kind of looks like angel wings, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we'll go like this. We're going to go do th this. Okay. There's an arm kind of. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. <laughs> And now I'm not you because okay, I'm going to come because you said kind of has. Oh, this is, I don't think that helped at all. All right, well, we have arms, legs, and a body. Use your imagination. I'm sure yours looks a lot better than this. Okay, so hmm. on a regular body, Landon, what do we always have on the on, on this part? What do we have? Eyes, hair. Eyes. Hair, mouth. Hair, mouth. What else? Nose. Nose. Okay, oh, what do we have on the sides of the head? Ears. Ears, okay. Now, just imagine that this whole body had eyes all over it and the hands and feet didn't work. Silly. <laughs> Let's imagine that that's had ears all over it and the hands and feet didn't work. Really silly. God used, gave us gifts to use. What kind of things can we do to help God when we have with eyes? If we were, if to we were, see. To, see. Okay. to see. To see, we can see people who need Jesus. How about with our ears? What can, how, how does God use us, that part of our body? We can hear people. We can hear people. We can. How about with our mouths? We can taste. We can taste. And there's a scripture verse that says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. That means to not only know that he's good to us, but we can tell other people about him. How about our hands? How, what can we use for our hands, our arms? To, to, to grab. To grab. And how about in, in, in Jesus' church? How can we use that? How can we use our arms, our hands? To pray, that is one of the best things. And if you have the gift of faith, you're going to spend a lot of time in prayer. How about giving to the Lord? 
or serving. Maybe we help stock things for the food pantry. Maybe we help bring things in for our Operation Christmas Child shoe boxes. There's so many ways to serve and to help. Maybe we help clean the church. Maybe we help uh, teach by teaching Sunday school. And that could be a mouth thing and an arm thing too. How about our legs? What, are we, what can we do to help in the church with our legs, Landon? What? Come on, we can walk. That's right, we can walk. We can talk, we can walk, and I bet it's kind of hot. We can walk and we can tell people, go to, to people who need Jesus. We can walk and we can help serve. There's so many things that we can do. And it's a good thing that we have all of these different body parts so that we can serve the Lord. It's the same way. When God has given us gifts, all the gifts that he has listed there, each one of us has a special gift. Maybe more than one, but most, but all of us have one gift that God really wants us to use for him. And when we use it for him, we are his body. We can build, oh, build the body of Christ to be stronger. That's not, and that's to, not heavy for you. Okay, shh, Landon. I know, it's the, it's the lighter weight, but that's okay. That's why I can lift it so well. <laughs> but we can be good bodybuilders by using the gifts he's given us to build his kingdom, to build his church, to build what he wants us to do. So shall we pray? Let's pray. Will you repeat after me, please? Dear Lord God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for creating me wonderfully and specially. Thank you, Lord, that there is no one else like me. Help me, Lord, to be a good bodybuilder. To be a good body builder. To help build your church. To help build your church. Help me to love you first. Help me to love you first. And to serve you. And to serve you. The way you have gifted me. The way you have gifted me. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 That's okay. Well, I hope that you learned a little bit more about how you, even young, old, and everywhere in between, can serve the Lord and help to be a bodybuilder of the body of Christ. Landon, you want to do a little bit more as we sign off? All right, you want this one? All right. You don't want to do any more bodybuilding? Well, you know what? You don't have to do this kind of bodybuilding, but we can serve the Lord and build his body. Hey, see you next time. We love you. We miss you. We can't wait to see you. And we do have our... Uh, our live worship service is going on right now, so maybe we'll see you at 1030 on Sunday morning for worship. We love you. Take care. Lord bless you all. Can you wait? Bye-bye.